Hi everyone. I hope you enjoy listening to the video today on the ACOA marriage, the adult child of an alcoholic marriage. My name is Jerry Wise. I'm a therapist at Family Tree Counseling in Carmel, Indiana, which is in um, the north part of Indianapolis. And I'd like to talk to you about this important marriage pattern, which I identify and see quite frequently. Uh, and it deals with those who have grown up in alcoholic or addicted alcohol or addicted homes. And one or both spouses are adult children of alcoholics. And this often results in what I call the ACOA marriage. These marriages can look like other videos I've done, The Lonely Marriage, uh, and another video that's soon to be posted, The Blaming Marriage, and another video that's already up, which is The Loveless But Loyal Marriage, and can take even other patterns besides that. Certainly the angry marriage. Um, ACOAs are able to find their brokenness being expressed in a number of different ways. Here are some traits that I find in all marriages in which an adult child or an alcoholic is a part of. There's lots of emotional reactivity. They follow the rules that they learn growing up, don't talk, don't feel, don't think. The marriages are filled with this belief and filled with this philosophy of not knowing what normal is. There are few or excessive boundaries. Most of the time it's, I think, tends towards the few boundaries. There is an inability to avoid emotional triangles, um, to avoid cutoffs, and to avoid enmeshment. The adult child of an alcoholic marriage, the ACOA marriage, the person who is the ACOA views their spouse often as being very low on the self-differentiation scale or being viewed as very immature or dysfunctional, but not see themselves as low on the self-differentiation scale or low in terms of maturity or emotional maturity for a relationship. That again is kind of hidden from their awareness. Or if you have a self-differentiation scale where 10 is the most mature, uh, the most healthy person, and 0 is the least mature, least healthy, and again this is very subjective, the ACOA would see themselves as a six on that scale and see their spouse as a two. And what they don't realize is they're a two as well. They just don't see that and don't realize that. But that's one of the traits of being an adult child or an alcoholic is you just don't notice lots of things. The adult child of an alcoholic, an adult who grew up in an alcoholic home, is most often attracted to drama. And drama equals poor boundaries, dysfunctional behaviors, addictions in others, addictions to others, enmeshment, which a lot of people don't realize, enmeshment and fusion in, a, in relationships creates lots of drama and persistent drama. Enmeshment and fusion is really a big problem for marriages. And again, the enmeshment occurs because we fantasize and hope that our spouse will fulfill and meet all the needs that and all of our brokenness, and they'll fix all of that. Uh, ACOAs tend to also be attracted to mood disordered folks. It's not unusual for maybe an ACOA to find a bipolar or cyclothymic type of person uh, who suffers with that because they're much more open to that kind of drama. They find someone who has learned poor communication uh, skills. Uh, they find someone who has learned helplessness in spouses and in friends. And the ACOA's naivety, 
which I call the hidden learn cluelessness. It's hidden and it's learned and it's our part of our cluelessness. And that naivety gets us into real fixes and dilemmas. The codependent also is, is, suffers with this type of naivety. And it's an immaturity in which we don't see what we're clueless about. Because we've learned to not see what we're clueless about. And this mixing bowl of dysfunction creates lots of drama, which is normal for the ACOA and their childhoods, which continue on in their marriages when they become an adult. So learning a new normal is critical for adult children of alcoholics. This new normal is the process of learning a new level of self-differentiation, in other words, differentiating yourselves from others, not being stuck in enmeshment. It involves having and learning a new level of maturity, which we often haven't been called to or haven't known how to get to. And it involves reducing what we don't know that we don't know. And I think that's very important because there are things that we don't know that we don't know we don't know. That may sound like gibberish, that may sound like foolishness, but those of you who are experienced in ACOA issues or codependency, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, and I can explain that further at later times. So what do I mean by this naivety? Naivety is simply not being aware of something. Simply living without the map or the manual for life that others seem to have. We just don't have that basic map, that basic awareness of what's normal, what's right, what's healthy. And it seems like other people got that memo. For ACOAs, we didn't get that memo. And thus our life and our marriages end up with being a I didn't get the memo type of marriage. ACOAs don't get that memo and they didn't get the map, they didn't get the manual for life, and that affects their relationships, their sense of self, power and how it's used, emotions, behaviors, boundaries, self-image, and self-empowerment. I believe it's difficult to heal an ACOA, ACOA marriage by yourself. Why is that? Because I just want people to go get help all the time? Well, I wouldn't mind that. Maybe our society would be a little bit better. Uh, but I think the difficulty is because we didn't get the memo and because we don't have the map, we need reality checking and help from other people who might be on a different scale of that self-differentiation and we can learn from them and grow. Uh, it's hard to use your map to find the way because your map is broken. The map is faulty. And there are there is guidance out there, for, uh, but it's not easy to find. I think of Janet Wojtitz's book, uh, uh, The Adult Child of an Alcoholic. She also writes a book for ACOAs and intimacy. ACOAs tend to use the help that they go out to get in many times a non-changing way but in a quick fix way, in a superficial adjustment way. And we all tend to do this. And so we kind of rearrange the furniture on the Titanic. I've heard people use that often. Uh, we change the drapes, we change the decor, but we don't and are not able to change the course of the ship. And I think that's why we need help. So we change the course of the ship, not just rearrange or decorate what's uh, what's headed for disaster. If you have an ACOA marriage, start reducing your naivety and improving your map and learn what's supposed to be normal in a healthy marriage and relationship. I know there's one book that might be of help to you. It's called An Adult Child's Guide to What's Normal by John Friel and Linda Friel. I think it can be a help to kind of helping you restore your map and kind of give you what the memo that other people seem to have that you may that you may lack 
It's so important to begin to heal your norm. Healing what is norm for you is very important. And that's a very deep work and a very significant change that's required. A paradigm shift. And that's what we specialize in here at Family Tree Counseling. It's having that paradigm shift and that deep change. The ACOA can use individual therapy, group therapy, and marital therapy as well. If you can't get all of those, get one of them. Start somewhere. If I can be of help, give me a call at 317-919-6264. Whether you live in Indianapolis or Virginia Beach or Portland or Atlanta, I provide Skype and FaceTime therapy and counseling. Please join the Family Tree Counseling channel on YouTube. Then you'll get all the latest and new videos for you. Uh, if you like the video, please like it. If you Leave comments. I respond to all the comments that people make on my videos. I have a blog as well. It's at www.familytreecounseling.com. And you can click the link to my blog. And it will uh, give you some blog listings like allergy to intimacy and I think helpful ways of changing that paradigm on my blog. Also if you send me your email address I'll send you extra postings and information to help you with your support and recovery. My, e -dress, my email address is shown here on the video. Uh, you can write to me and I just want to thank you for listening today and have a great day.